great. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another webinar by Elijah Staff. My name is Nick Zulfikar. I'm the Director of Client Services here. With me is my colleague, Rana Sen, who's our Senior Technology Evangelist. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about a very exciting topic, um, comparing two of the leading distributed caching solutions on the market today, uh, NCash and Redis. Um, NCash is the market leader in .NET uh, environment. Uh, Redis is also a very popular distributed caching solution. So Ron is going to take us through um, feature by feature comparison and talk uh, about uh, various um, server side features, object caching features, scalability, high availability, um, and uh, uh, you know, uh, putting things side by side and uh, showing you how NCache uh, beats Redis in most cases, uh, hands down. So uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ron who's going to take us through the technical part of the presentation. Uh, if there are any, any questions, you can always type them in the questions box on the right hand side of your, of your window and uh, I'll be able to ask those uh, from Ron. So uh, Ron, with that, uh, kindly get started, please. Very good. Thank you very much, uh, Nick. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ron and I will be your presenter for today's webinar. And as Nick suggested, the topic that we've chosen today is, uh, um, you know, an aggressive one. Uh, we'll actually t talk about various differences between NCache and Redis and how NCache is a better solution uh, in, in comparison for your .NET applications. So it is going to be a, a high level, uh, you know, comparison to start off and then we'll talk about uh, some specific details about object caching features, some server side code and um, in, in, in general terms, why NCache is a better fit when, when you plan on using a distributed caching system into your applications. Uh, I'm going to compare NCache Enterprise uh, 4.9, that's the latest version of NCache, uh, with Redis version 3.2.7. Uh, essentially, this is the Redis uh, that's being used uh, in, in the cloud. Uh, so we'll compete uh, these two, you know, we'll just compare these two products in, in terms of uh, what uh, features are available and, and how NCache is a better solution in comparison. So uh, let's get started with this and like Nick uh, mentioned if there are any questions please use the question and answer tab and I'll be very happy to answer all your questions for that matter. Alright so let's quickly get started. Uh, typically when you plan on using a distributed caching system um, you, you know you um, simply use it to improve applications performance and scalability. So from a cache standpoint, uh, it actually saves your expensive trips to the database, uh, your application tier which usually scales out nicely and database is something which does not scale out nicely. Uh, it's a single uh, source handling all your data requests and it's very good for storage but it's not that good uh, when it comes to handling extreme transactional processing. And scalability is, is, is exactly that ability where you have certain performance under low load. If you can maintain the same kind of performance under peak load, uh, under high throughput and then you still have the low latency that ability is called scalability. So scalability problems occur if you have a data storage which uh, becomes a bottleneck because it's not able to cope up with the increased amount of request load that your applications are, are, are actually putting onto NCache or, or uh, putting onto the da database for that matter. Uh, you can put a load balancer in, in front of your uh, web servers, you can create a web form, it could be a ASP.NET application. Uh, deployed on different servers. So that tier scales out but it end up, ends up talking to a, a data storage which is not that scalable. So that's the main problem distributed caching systems resolve. Uh, you simply place a distributed caching system in between your applications and the database and it actually saves your trips, expensive trips to the backend data sources and in turn it actually improves your performance. It improves the overall architecture by you know increasing the scalability. Uh, you know, uh, side of things, and then it also is a very reliable, a very highly available uh, scenario in most of the cases if you've chosen the right uh, solution for that matter. And nice thing about NCache, I would just uh, use NCache as an example, uh, that you can use it in addition to a relational database. It's essentially not a replacement of, of your relational databases uh, as you um, would do when you have a NoSQL database. But NCache is a key value store, it's an in memory store, it, it's extremely fast. Uh, you know it's linearly scalable and it, it allows you to add more and more servers on the fly and you can use it in addition to our relational database and you save your trips uh, to the database uh, for reference and transactional data and you know you, we usually cover uh, quite great details um, you know uh, for our architectural webinar scale, you know scaling .NET applications webinar 
since this webinar is more focused on on differences between NCache and Redis, so I'll primarily focus on some of the key uh, terminologies, and then we'll move on to the comparison section. Here is how a distributed caching system like NCache is deployed. You can have a dedicated tier, or you can use the existing, uh, you know, web or app servers as well. It's entirely up to you how you design your architecture, and then then you. You know, based on that, you start using a distributed cache either on a separate tier or on the same tier. And you can see that uh, you know you can create a cluster, uh, Windows, Windows Nano, Linux server. Uh, you know, all these environments are supported, and this becomes a more scalable platform in comparison to database and, and takes care of all the bottlenecks that you typically see with relational databases. Uh, some common use cases, and then we'll move on to the comparison section. Uh, you can use it for application data caching. This could be object caching. Uh, this is also uh, possible in .NET and .NET Core. Uh, you can just consume the API directly yourself. It could be through iDistributed cache in, in ASP.NET Core. It could be Entity Framework or Entity Framework Core. And distributed cache can be used through that, or it could be nHibernate. So there are many ways you can use uh, distributed caching system like NCache for data caching. And idea here is that you save your expensive trips to the backend databases. Then from web application standpoint, ASP and ASP dot, ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core caching. Uh, this is a, usually a transient data. Uh, application data caching is more of a permanent data, reference data, more reads than writes. Whereas ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core specific caching may be, a ref, uh, may be some reference data. It could also be object caching, but usually it's a transactional data specific to the current user uh, who are actually uh, logged on to the system and then they need that data. Quick example would be ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core sessions. You can use a distributed caching system for caching sessions. ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core SignalR backplane. So if you have a SignalR application, you can have a backplane to have a centralized bus transferring all the messages to all the connected web servers. And then we also have ASP.NET and uh, output caching and an equivalent of it uh, in ASP.NET Core is the response caching. And then we have ASP.NET view state caching for uh, legacy web forms, pre-MVC applications can take benefit of it. All of these are uh, essentially no code change options. You don't have to make any code changes, but you can use distributed caching system uh, to take advantage and then and, and get uh, benefits of high performance and scalability. Then most importantly, you can also use it, uh, a distributed cache for your runtime data sharing. These are technical use cases. There are, uh, there are also industry specific use cases, which we can uh, touch, uh, but uh, Distributed cache is a centralized entity. It can act as a communication platform, a messaging platform. Multiple applications can connect to it, and you can use it as a pub sub messaging platform or, or runtime data sharing events, right? So you could have publishers uh, publishing messages, and, and there are subscribers who are actually dependent or, or or need that data, so they could actually consume the messages as needed. And it's a it's purely based on on the idea of pub sub, where it's loosely coupled. Publishers don't need to know subscribers and vice versa, and communication channel can have concept of topics so that you have suppression of concerns. Load distribution is done properly. So all the benefits uh, are achieved, and on top of it, of a pops up to, to be precise, and on top of it, you have a distributed caching platform, uh, which is very scalable, which is fast. It, it's processing things in parallel. And, and you get a lot of uh, you know benefits and as, as a result of it. So this, these are some of the distributed caching use cases uh, that you can consider using. I'll move on to the next section, NCache. Uh, uh, as a product, it was launched in 2005. It's the oldest, most .NET-based uh, distributed caching system. It's written in .NET and primarily for .NET applications. Uh, it's open source as well, and uh, current version of NCache is 4.9, and this is the 14th version of this product. Uh, it has been in the market for over 12 years, uh, lots of traction, lots of actual clients using it. Uh, and these are some of our uh, you know, uh, customers which have active deployments. There are many more, and you can get a detailed list from our website as well. All right, so I think uh, we've spent enough time on introduction. Um, I'll quickly talk about NCache versus Redis. So we have defined some categories. Um, I'll just pick uh, each category and then I'll, I'll talk about different uh, benefits of one product over the other. Uh, so platform and technology. So let's let's get started with this one. All right. So first of all, uh, this uh, webinar, uh, we initially discussed that uh, for .NET applications, uh, uh, we, we discussed uh, that, you know, NCache is something that you can use in .NET and .NET Core applications. As a matter of fact, NCache is 100% native .NET based distributed caching system. It's written in .NET, in c -sharp, to be precise, and it natively gets deployed on Windows environments. So that's the prereq for NCache, that you have to have .NET framework 
uh, you know, uh, installed, and that's the only prereq for NCache, and it runs natively uh, on Windows environment. You don't have to have a ported version or, or some Docker images to be. Uh, Docker is in, in uh, you know another way you can deploy NCache, uh, but NCache itself is written in .NET, and uh, that's the key benefit in in comparison to Redis. Redis is uh, not native .NET. It's C++ uh, based, and it's it's typically deployed in, in Linux environments. There is a Windows version of uh, Redis as well, but that was uh, through Microsoft Open Tech. And by the way, that company doesn't exist anymore. Uh, it was a buggy, unstable version, and they did not have production support for it. And we get a lot of uh, a lot of our uh, you know uh, evaluators of Handcache. They come to us complaining that when they actually have to deploy Redis, it has to be a, li a Linux box, and that's a big uh, you know issue, uh, specifically when you have a complete stack of .NET coming from a .NET application standpoint. If you're a .NET shop and there's a .NET developer that you would like to have all your deployments or your uh, application requirements handled within .NET. Um, I've seen developers who are very specific about this concept even within .NET if somebody's development, uh, developing everything in .NET Core they would actually like to keep everything on the .NET Core side of things and this is why we have .NET Core servers as well. So if you plan on deploying NCache on uh, Windows we have .NET as well as .NET Core server uh, based on your preference, and then if you plan on uh, deploying NCache on Linux, again on .NET Core, uh, that's the option of using NCache on Linux. We have Docker as well as Tar.gz for Linux as well. But uh, the point that, that I'm trying to make here is that uh, the the main focus of NCache is .NET and .NET uh, Core side of things. It natively gets deployed on Windows, Windows 2000. Uh, 12, 2016, it's certified for these as well. And on top of it, we have Windows Nano and we have full production support uh, available, unlike Redis, where uh, the third party or let's say Microsoft Open Tech uh, version of it uh, is, is not stable to start off and then there is no official support. And, and as a matter of fact, Linux is what, what people, people actually deploy in when it comes to production deployment. Then we have Linux support as well. Uh, we provide full support, official full support uh, in Linux. Uh, that's what Redis also covers by Redis Labs as well as uh, some, some third party providers. And then we have .NET and .NET Core clients available as well. That's something that you can choose to run on Windows as well as on Linux. So if you have a Linux uh, background and you're developing a .NET Core or Java application, you can still use NCache because there's a Java client as well. But officially we have .NET and .NET Core clients which are supported. Java client is also officially supported by the way. And you can choose to have uh, these applications running you know, most likely on, on Windows, but if you choose to have Linux, we have full support for it. Whereas on the Redis Windows side of things, is, it does not look that good. So that's the first, uh, you know, difference. And based on our experience, this is one of the big benefits where you have everything in complete uh, one stack. You know, you, if you're a .NET developer or .NET Core developer, you could have, have everything within the same uh, stack available. Next uh, is a cache performance. Uh, NCache is a extremely fast and scalable uh, you know um, product it keeps everything in memory Redis is also very fast and uh, as a matter of fact Linux version of uh, Redis is something which compares uh, with NCache so these are comparable in terms of performance but uh, how NCache is better there are some features which are specific to NCache and this is one other factor uh, where NCache has more uh, capabilities where you can turn on some performance features and it can actually uh, give you some dramatic performance improvements and those features just do not exist on the Redis side of things. I'll give you a quick example of client cache. Uh, client cache is one of the features which NCache specializes in and Redis completely lacks the support. Right? And if I have to explain what client cache is, client cache is a client side local cache which runs on your application box. It could be on the application server itself or it could be in the process of application running in proc. So we have out proc or in proc client cache offer. Uh, offering that you can enable. It's a no code change option. You simply set this client cache up through GUI tools or through PowerShell tools and your clustered cache, let's say two to three servers, it will automatically bring the subset of the data closer to your application. So it's essentially saving expensive trips uh, from your web application or, or, or your server application, whichever application is using NCache. Uh, it actually saves the trips across the network from the application to NCache cache cluster. So it keeps cache uh, data closer to the application, similar to L1, L2 uh, cache in hardware where you keep data closer uh, to have improved performance. And on top of it, NCache manages the synchronization uh, between your uh, client cache and the server cache because it's a subset of data. 
data exists in two different places. Uh, data exists in the client cache, master copies in the server cache, and there are other client caches as well, which could also have the overlapping data. Ncache manages the complete synchronization of the data, uh, and it's completely seamless to your users. So if something changes in the client cache, it gets propagated in the server cache, and if something gets changed in the server cache directly, it gets propagated into the into all the client caches as well. And as a net result, you improve the performance. If your uh, use case is more reads than writes, this is a very recommended feature that you need to turn on, and Redis does not have this feature. And this is one of the reasons uh, people come to us and then they uh, they have some performance reason. They've already evaluated different options, uh, and they come up with, with the use case of improving performance. And I'll give you a quick example. We had one of our customers who was actually running a workflow and using the data from the cache. Uh, it was taking 46 seconds to complete the data retrieval process. Uh, since it was a reference data scenario, so we turned on the client cache out proc, and it brought it down to 12 seconds. And then after that, we actually experimented with in proc client cache. We turned that on because it's just a plug and play feature. Uh, it brought down performance to a couple hundred milliseconds from 46 seconds to 12 seconds, and from 12 seconds to uh, a couple hundred milliseconds. So that's the kind of performance improvements we're, we're actually talking about here. And that is something which Redis completely lacks. Bulk operations, this is something which is supported on both ends, but NCache bulk operations are slightly uh, more advanced where uh, Redis is limited. NCache bulk operations uh, can be applied on an entire cache cluster. Uh, Redis has concept of uh, you know data partitioning through shards. We call them partitions. Uh, so NCache data is fully distributed on all the servers and our bulk operations are applied on all the servers um, at once. So you don't limit your uh, capacity to one shard for that matter, whereas Redis uh, bulk operations are limited to one shard only. So that's one. But these are um, you know performance improvements. You can improve performance by dealing with multiple items at once, adding them, updating them, or retrieving them. Then two other features which are going to give huge performance improvements are fast complexization and compression. So uh, serialization is a big overhead. Um, if your objects are bigger or complex, uh, this further complicates. Redis, you have to convert uh, convert everything to the string. There are no add-on features which you can turn on to improve performance for uh, specifically for serialization overhead. Whereas NCache, we have fast complex serialization feature. Uh, it's uh, it allows you to you know register your objects with us. So without any code changes, NCache will take care of serialization and deserialization. Uh, we just need your object assembly. We generate uh, you know IDs against types. We keep the compiled version of the code we uh, in in memory. So that serialization and deserialization code is generated at runtime and is kept in a compiled manner in memory. We don't use reflection at runtime. And um, as a net result, when you need to serialize objects, we we actually perform this in memory in a super fast manner. So serialization and deserialization um, you know overhead that you typically see and there are no options in Redis. To improve that overhead, NCache would actually give you a lot of improvements. As a matter of fact, it, it can give you five to ten times uh, performance improvements uh, only for the serialization um, side of things. Compression is another feature without any code changes, you can turn this on, and any object which is greater than a certain threshold is automatically going to be compressed. And you just plug in, uh, in and these are some of the performance features. As a matter of fact, I've done a separate webinar where we covered six different features to improve NCache performance. I think it's uh, going to be repeated uh, in, in, in uh, one of our upcoming webinar series. So uh, these are some performance and scalability side of things uh, which uh, you can use. And these are some of the features which can actually further improve NCache performance. And on the Redis side, we completely lack these features. Please let me know if there are any questions. Um, I'll, I'll be very happy to take those. So let me know if there are any questions. Now, if there are no questions, I'm going to move on to our next segment, high availability. Now, this is another very important, uh, you know, segment. I want to spend some uh, time here so that we, you know, cover what are the differences in terms of architecture between these two products. Uh, NCache uh, cluster. Let's talk about the clustering uh, to start off. Uh, NCache cluster is a 100% peer-to-peer architectured cache cluster. It's a TCP/IP-based cache clustering. Uh, it's not Windows clustering. Uh, it's our own implemented TCP IP uh, based cache clustering protocol. And we've designed it in such a way that we've kept it 100% peer to peer architecture. There's no single point of failure, uh, or there's no dependency on one of the servers, or there's no master slave concept to, 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 to be precise. And 
this is exactly what Redis lacks. Uh, Redis has master and, and slave concepts. It's not highly available in true sense. Uh, you cannot add, remove, uh, you know, your shards at runtime. Whereas uh, in NCache, it allows you to first of all create a cache in a 100% peer-to-peer architecture manner. You can have multiple servers, and on top of it, these servers can be added or removed on the fly. You don't have to stop the cache or any of the clients which are connected to it. Whereas in Redis, if a master goes down, the slave cannot become active. It does not have an ability to heal itself automatically, unlike NCache, which if there are three servers, one server goes down, it would automatically recover from this and it would heal itself, making the backup of the server, uh, the lost server available as well. And it would simply heal itself into a healthy two node cluster without any user inter intervention. So if a shard goes down on the Redis side, um, if then there is a master slave concept as well uh, the slave cannot become master on its own you have to have a manual intervention in order to correct that and if you have to have more servers added uh, the client side distribution changes right client now needs to talk to the to, to more servers or similarly if you remove a server or you need to readjust shards that's something which is not possible at runtime so there is some manual intervention you can still do that but there is a manual intervention and this is not something which you would like to have in production consider uh, your one of your uh, you know shards or uh, you know that going down because of a power failure in production and that was a mission critical system uh, you won't be able to afford somebody actually going into the environment, checking things, re you know, reviewing, and, and then uh, after a review, end up knowing that they have to actually adjust this. So that's a big uh, issue, specifically for applications that need 100% uptime. NCache uh, cluster ensure that you don't have to have uh, somebody manually intervening in this case. It would self heal itself. It's highly dynamic. You can add or remove servers on the fly. You don't have to stop the cache or any of the clients or restart them for that matter. And this is, uh, there's a slide which actually covers it. You can add server, remove server, and cluster adjusts automatically. The membership information, the distribution of partitions, we call uh, shards, are, are partitions in NCache. So partitions are redistributed automatically. I'll cover this once we move on to our next section. So that's something which is built into the protocol and you don't have to get involved. Uh, then we have split brain detection and recovery for temporary glitches. Uh, it is possible that if your network is not that stable, uh, for temporary glitches, uh, if there are three servers, you can have a split brain in the cache cluster. So for that, we have a specific feature which detects it really, you know, in a, in a fairly quicker manner. Uh, and then we have auto recovery from it as well. Again, you don't need a manual intervention for detection or recovery. Um, you can either turn on detection and get involved yourself, uh, recover it yourself, or you can turn on an auto recovery feature from NCache standpoint, and it would allow you to automatically recover without you having uh, to make any steps uh, to fix that. So this is something which is built into the protocol. You just need to turn this feature on, and this is something Redis completely lacks. Then we have dynamic configurations. Uh, you can manually, you can, you know, dynamically, you can apply uh, configurational changes, some cluster level changes onto the clients at runtime. And this is something that we covered as part of our clustering uh, support. Uh, cache change, cache settings can be changed on the fly as well. So that's another feature which NCache specializes. Uh, Redis uh, dynamic configurations are limited because you may have to manually apply those on each server. Uh, separately, and then we have cluster health events as well. This is something that we propagate. Um, you know, there are may various resources that we publish anyway. But from within application standpoint, you can get hold of our uh, uh, cluster events, and you can get notified uh, how cluster is behaving, uh, whether it's healthy, it's it's started, stop, no joins, leaves, all sort of good stuff. So this is one of the key uh, you know differences that I wanted to highlight because this is something that. Uh, you know, makes NCache a lot more superior product in comparison to Redis. Uh, we have seen people complaining in production. We've seen uh, people actually testing this uh, during their evaluation, and then they have chosen NCache uh, specifically for for this requirement as well, along with other uh, others that, that we covered previously. All right, uh, next uh, segment that I want to uh, cover is dynamic partitioning uh, within. Um, how NCache uh, handles uh, high availability, we, we touched uh, this uh, from an introduction standpoint. Now let's get actually uh, to the specific details. Uh, NCache has 100% dynamic partitioning. So we, we have two topologies, partition and partition replica cache. And these partitions, uh, Redis calls uh, partitions as shards. 
uh, we, we call them partitions. So these partitions uh, readjust automatically in case a server gets added or a node gets uh, a server gets down, for that matter. And that's something which which is not the case in in Redis. Redis cannot readjust shard at runtime. You have to have the uh, manual intervention, and then you have to stop if if uh, you know uh, the shard goes down. So that you, for example, there's no uh, backup, right? So if there is um, an active master slave concept, master goes down, slave cannot become active. And then you need to have replication in order to have uh, the high availability into place. Your your shards in Redis, if a shard goes down, right? So you lose uh, the high availability. Uh, you know, um, support in, in, in that sense. That's not the case in NCache. Uh, NCache partitioned cache is something which is purely partitioned without replication. If a server goes down, it, it still keeps working. There is a data loss, but that's expected. So let's talk about partition and partition uh, replica caches. This is an example of partition cache. We have partition of uh, data on server one, which is automatically made, you know, automatically distributed. Clients connect to all the servers, and there's a partition on server two. So this works in a highly available manner even without replication. So if a server goes down, you don't have downtime in your application. Your applications would fail over and start using only server two. They would know that server one does not exist anymore. This data is also lost because there's no replication. So you have to reconstruct that data from the backend data source. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that even without replication, NCache cluster is highly available. And we have partition uh, topology that, that takes care of it. Then if you you also want to ensure that your data exists uh, in, in a backed up manner, if a server goes down, you don't want to lose data. We have partition replica, which is purely dynamic. It, it has two partitions per server. There's an active data partition and a passive replica partition of another server. So one's backup is on two, a server two's backup is on, on one. These are passive replicas. No clients are connected to them. Clients are only connected to the active partitions, and these are updated by other servers' active partitions. So this partition has backup on two. This partition has backup on server one. You can choose sync or async replication. That's up to you. If this server goes down, the replica partition becomes activated automatically, unlike Redis, where if a shard goes down and if, if the active, uh, the master goes down, uh, the passive does not become uh, active automatically. It, it has to be uh, manual intervention in that case. Unlike that, NCache replica becomes activated right away. So you get uh, updated replica, and then this data gets merged into the uh, uh, active partition. For three node server, it would actually uh, be more uh, elaborate how cluster heals. Uh, server 1 has backup on 2, server 2 has backup on 3, server 3 has backup on 1. These are passive replicas. Uh, if server 1 goes down, you have the backup of server 1 activated at runtime automatically. It's seamless to your users. It just becomes activated and clients start using it. Now, there is an anomaly in the cache cluster, right? So there is uh, more data on server 2 because now we have item number 1, 2, and 3, 4. Uh, server 3 does not have any partition, so that is lost. And then server two has partial backup over here. So there's an anomaly in the cache cluster. It's not a healthy two node scenario. You don't have to get involved uh, yourself. Cluster would initiate a state transfer process and it would heal itself automatically. It would automatically uh, distribute data of this activated partition into uh, server two and server three active partitions. Data gets merged. And then server three will formulate a new backup on server two and server two will complete its backup. Again, you would end up with two node healthy cache cluster if a server goes down. Similarly, if you add a server, you don't have to get involved. You just start it. It would join the cache cluster based on the configurations and it would automatically redistribute data from two to three servers. These partitions are formulated automatically and clients are notified at runtime. This is some of uh, the some of the great features that NCache exhibits and Redis completely uh, ignores the dynamic nature of it. It does have shards. Uh, it does have active and, and, and you know master and slave concept, but when it comes to readjusting and, and having self-healing mechanism within the cluster, NCache completely specializes in this field. Please let me know if there are any questions. I, I think it's a lot of information to process, but please let me know if there are any questions. Feel free to stop me and, uh, and, and ask those questions. I we don't have any questions, Ron. Very good. All right, so let's quickly uh, take a look at our, uh, you know, a quick demo uh, of the product so that you see um, how a cluster gets created. And, and if, if time permits, I'll quickly show you how to stop a node and, and, and join a node in the cache cluster. So I'm, I'm actually going to log on to one of our um, demo environments. Let me just pick one.
for some reason terminal was not working properly so I have to resort to this I think I can work with this. Let's actually create a new cache. Uh, this is the management tool. Um, it's slightly enlarged. Let me see if I can. Let's actually use terminal for this. Please bear with me. demo two real quick all right we're good all right so I'll quickly get started uh, by creating a named cache all caches need to be named uh, so I'll just uh, name mine uh, Environment is acting up on me, so all right. I think I can use Encache Manager from here. All right, so uh, we have GUI tools as well as PowerShell tools. So uh, what I'll really do is show you how to quickly get started with uh, creating a cache cluster with Encache, and then uh, if time permits, I'll quickly uh, showcase how to actually start a node and, and stop a node at one time. So I'll, uh, you know, I won't waste uh, time in terms of explaining uh, a lot of configurations because there are separate webinars which target this. I'll just name the cache, pick partition replica cache, replication to be asynchronous, and here I specify. Uh, let me just change the name to, let's say demo cache one two three. There was one already, so demo one and demo two are going to be two servers which are going to host my cache cluster. This is initial set of servers, TCP/IP port for communication. Uh, size on each server and I'll just start this cache cluster on finish and that's it that's how simple it is to actually create and start a cache cluster using the GUI tool and we have PowerShell tools as well which you can use exactly on the same lines where you could just uh, configure a cache using the PowerShell commandlets well there is a licensing issue so Let me add another node. Let me just add my box as a as a server node. I'll, uh, I'll actually quickly send a text message to Cal uh, to actually set up the environment. Uh, Nick, uh, would you uh, kindly ask Cal to set up 107 so that I can use it for demo? I think I'll move on to uh, the presentation, right? And then I'll, I'll revisit once uh, I get a confirmation from Cal that 107 has licensing issue fixed. I think uh, he's been testing with this, so please confirm. Uh, Nick, would you take care of it? I don't have a license key otherwise I would have uh, you know applied it. Nick did you copy? Yeah. 
Hey Nick, uh, did you copy? I think there are some issues. So guys, I'm going to send a quick text message. Uh, let me just see. I actually really need this uh, to be... All right, I really hope somebody gets uh, back to me with the response. I apologize for this. Uh, so moving on, um, I'll revisit the demo portion once the licensing issue of 107 has been fixed. Uh, Ncash versus Redis, next uh, topic is cloud support. Uh, we will actually uh, talk about what Ncash offers in comparison to Redis. On this, uh, we have almost similar offerings. Uh, Ncash, Cache Server, VMs are available uh, from Marketplace. You can get an unmanaged VM image yourself uh, you bring your own license and BYOL model is followed here uh, that license can be uh, made available from our side and then you actually have a, a configured installed uh, VM that you use to create a cache cluster it will be a lot similar to what I have right here uh, two servers and cache installed on both of them at, at this point it's running with one server so I can show you some of the details here but I really want this server to be uh, running as well All right, so uh, so unmanaged uh, could be either through marketplace where you get the VM and, and install uh, get an installed version of Ncash and then use it for all your deployments, or you could have your own VM and then download Ncash from our website and install it. That's something that Redis also covers in Azure and AWS. So we um, have the same model on the on this line. Then we have cache clusters uh, VMs which are managed. Uh, for those of you who want to have uh, a clustered uh, instance of Ncash, but uh, within their own subscription within the VNet or VPC, uh, which is fast, five times faster than than uh, the typical SaaS model. Uh, and nice thing it, uh, about this would be this cluster would be monitored, managed by our team. So you could just uh, get hold of us um, and and get the get hold of the managed cache cluster from our side, and, and then we'll take care of it from that standpoint. And this is something that Redis also does. Uh, different offerings of Redis, open source and, and Redis Labs, uh, the enterprise that covers it. Uh, the difference between um, Redis and Ncash would be uh, primarily between running, be able to run Ncash in your own VNet and VPC, and which is, we experimented with this and uh, we were able to generate five times more performance in comparison to typical Redis SaaS model. So that is something that 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 is of key interest, and then run server-side code. Now that you have your uh, VMs managed or unmanaged within your own uh, you know control, because even if it's managed, you you still have control over it. You give access to us, or or we we can share access to you based on uh, the arrangement that we have. So you can have a read through and write through implemented and run it uh, on the cache cluster. So that's something that Redis completely lacks. These features are not even available on Redis side, that you can run a server side runnable code on the cache cluster um, um, right away. All right, I've got a confirmation that uh, the licensing issue is fixed. Let me see if I can start it. There you go. So my team finally helped me, which is great. All right, so I'll just add these boxes as client nodes as well. So there was a licensing issue. Uh, license was not valid. I think there was a testing going on. Oops, I actually used my machine. I should have been using 107. Very good. All right, so our two node cache cluster is fully set up. I think we can uh, continue with the hands-on portion and we have a client which we can also use so I'll run a stress testing tool application which comes installed for some reason this uh, environment is acting up on me so I'm just going to use stress testing tool from here I'm not sure why it actually does this but anyways so I'm going to actually open the stresses tool from here it's a tool which comes installed with Ncash and it allows you to run some dummy load on the cache cluster 
and this will simulate some activity which I should be able to demonstrate from here and you could see that the request per second capacity is being shown on both servers about thousand requests uh, in totality actually more than that by each server is currently handled and if I right click and choose uh, monitor cluster this would open a monitoring tool and now I'll, I'll stop one node and then I'll show you how to start it and by the way there are no majority rules you can have a cache cluster running with two servers to start off and you can stop one node and it would fully recover from it automatically as, as a matter of fact let's actually do this uh, what I'll do is I since I have two servers I'll just stop one server on the fly and I've stopped 108 this is the server right here which I have stopped right so you would see requests stopping here and this request per second counter almost jumped to the double as soon as uh, cluster uh, recovers from this state there you go we have about twice as much requests being handled uh, as we had previously uh, been serving you can see there was a slight drop about let's say 10 15 seconds and now we have about the double uh, the amount of requests per second and this is how cluster uh, you know recovers from it and I'll actually start a new node at runtime and we have active and partitions as well this is a partition replica we have active up and here and backup right here we have active here and backup right here now that we've started a new server again a two node healthy cache cluster has been formulated on the fly and if I show you the monitoring tool real quick you can see there was a slight dip but uh, that was because the request uh, needed to be rebalanced so it, it does this on the fly seamlessly it heals itself and this is the exact uh, you know this is exactly what I wanted to refer in terms of high available true high availability and, and self healing mechanism uh, within NCache partitions I hope uh, you liked it please let me know uh, if there are any questions um, please let me know I think uh, we can take those questions Let me just verify. Yeah, there you go. All right, guys. So next, uh, assuming there are no more questions. Uh, right. So next thing I'll do is I'll talk about the object caching feature uh, features within NCache and what are the differences. And this is one of the key factors uh, where we'll cover um, why NCache um, object caching features are a lot mature in comparison. Uh, because we're old, we're the oldest, most .NET based distributed caching system. We have a lot to offer in terms of object caching feature. So most importantly, let's see how to keep cache fresh. So we have uh, reference data, and then we have transactional data. Typically, we recommend that you bring all your reference data into NCache, and then you set up some kind of expirations. Uh, it could be long expirations for reference data, and it could be short expirations uh, for transactional data. Uh, NCache provides sliding as well as absolute, whereas Redis only has absolute. Sliding expiration works in such a way that if an item is not accessed, such as ASP.NET sessions, we use sliding expiration. Um, it gets removed uh, after the elapsed time, um, you know, the, the expired time gets elapsed. So if you access it, it gets reset. So that's one uh, factor. And then you can synchronize your cache with your databases. You can set up a database dependency between NCache items and the database items. Um, so you fetch a record using your radio.net connector using entity framework, whichever is convenient. Uh, you get the object mapped and then you store object. And now that data belongs in two different places. You need to have synchronization happening. So uh, if your data uh, changes in the database, it can make your cache data stale. So in order to tackle that, we allow you to set up a SQL dependency between your database records and NCache. So if a database changes, NCache would automatically invalidate the record or reload in most cases. I'll show you the uh, SQL dependency code real quick. Here is a sample which comes installed with NCache. Uh, you can find these samples under program files, NCache samples, and inside .NET we have all these samples available. That's, these are the ones which I'm demonstrating at this point. All you have to do is uh, select the record in the database. For example, I'm selecting a row using a product ID which is a runtime parameter and then I'm creating a cache dependency and I'm defining it to be SQL cache dependency this is an event based dependency there are many by the way uh, we specify a connection string to the data source and the query string which maps the records and then when we need to add the item in the cache we simply attach it with the dependency and then we call cache.add or cache.insert uh, what really happens behind the scenes is that NCache keeps track of this record in the database 
uh, through database uh, broker service and if something changes in the database database does that and database notifies and cache via event uh, notifications and then cache catches those events and in some cases the default option is that you remove uh, the item from the cache as well if it changes in the database or you reload it there is a data access layer provider read through which you can run on end cache and you can reload item on expiry as well so that's one feature uh, which allows you to synchronize there are many you can use oracle dependency as well if you have oracle database we have a db dependency as well which is similar uh, instead of database sending event notifications end cache polls for changes and, and um, finds the, the change items and removes them uh, in, in a polling interval this is fast uh, in terms of uh, you know it's it's optimized in terms of resource utilization in terms of performance it doesn't have to deal with uh, event notification traffic but SQL dependency is more robust uh, then we have CLR show procedures that's another way you can achieve this so we allow you to synchronize your cache with database and Redis does not have these features um, in, in Azure as well as in AWS uh, these are the features which are not available you can sync cache with non-relational databases such as file dependency and custom dependency. You can make items dependent on file. File changes, you can remove or, or reload the items automatically. Custom dependency can invalidate items based on your business logics. For example, you can monitor products. If product price goes above $100, you want to flush the products out of the cache or reload them. Uh, you can achieve that. And then finally, we have key-based dependency to handle one-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many -many relationships inside the cache objects as well. It's very difficult, but with this feature, uh, you can handle relational data in the distributed cache without any issues. Uh, so this uh, covers it. Next, we'll talk about SQL and link searching. Uh, that's another feature uh, in a, another mm -hmm. section where uh, NCache has a clear edge. Is there a question, Nick? Yes, Ron. Um, I have a quick question here. Um, there's a question about any number of uh, nodes in a cluster beyond which uh, it's the scalability is not really improved. Instead, it uh, affects negatively uh, on the performance. Is there any such number of nodes in a cluster? Uh, not, not at all. Basically, this is a linear scalability. As a matter of fact, we have published our, uh, some benchmark numbers on our website as well. So it's a linearly scalable. Mm -hmm. Um, you just need to take into account the uh, the amount of request load that you're expecting from the applications and see the server hardware resources and if you see that the current number of servers are being maxed out you actually add another server and you can add as many servers as you need to and as you add more servers it would linearly improve transactional uh, you know load handling capacity more servers mean more load handling capacity out of the system more throughput out of the system so there are no upper limits um, we've seen cluster uh, these are proper uh, you know uh, NCAS servers with multi cores um, you know um, with dual NIC uh, and, and a lot of memory a lot of data uh, being handled and we've seen upwards of six eight twelve uh, servers hosting the cache cluster and it does not have any issues you can increase as many yeah. uh, servers as you need to great thanks very good Moving on, um, I'm going to show you uh, some more features. SQL and link searching. This is something which uh, NCache specializes. Um, uh, it has its own uh, object query language and it also supports link searches. Uh, if you have entire data set in the cache, if you're dealing with reference data, uh, it makes sense to use cache as your search uh, store as well. You don't have to go to the data source. Um, you don't have to rely on uh, result set caching. Uh, since entire data in the cache, so you can run queries, you can run criteria directly on the cache as well. So if that's the case, you can simply run a object query language. Uh, it's very similar to uh, SQL. It's called SQL, uh, you know, search to be precise within NCache. Um, you just specify the namespace and and you say select the the product where this dot id. Uh, and logical operators are supported, supported um, order by, group by uh, supported, aggregate operations are supported, like a query is supported. So there are a lot of features that, that you can use. And you simply uh, pass on the criteria, the runtime parameters with this, and then you call execute reader. It gives you a reader interface on the cache and it gets you the result set based on the criteria that you specify. Since cache is a key value store, you don't need keys or you don't know the keys all the time, right? So you may have a criteria. Let's say select products where product dot price is greater than 10 and product dot price is less than 100. So in that case, you can run um, this query and it would just formulate the result set. And it's pretty fast because we have a lot of servers working behind the scenes uh, in terms of uh, getting the data um, 
you know for for your client application link is also supported uh, that's again not supported in redis uh, link is right here all you have to do is uh, index your objects and that's a requirement for object query language sql like query and link as well and once you've done that we know we need to know the types and and the attributes on which you want to run the query and here is an iQueryable of ncache query you just define your product as iQueryable and, and then you specify ncache query um, as a header and then you simply run a link query and as you consume the objects it's again um, uh, you know it again follows the the same um, you know approach of link when you consume the result it would actually get the query executed so link gets uh, executed and without any code changes you could run link, link queries within cache as well group subgroups for logical collections inside the cache um, you can have data grouping uh, for subset of the data for transactional data partial data you can still have uh, collections of interest formed with the help of groups uh, subgroups you can attach a keyword as well which is a lot more flexible than groups um, and you can attach same tag to multiple items a quick example would be if you have let's say products in the cache you can attach a product tag or product group onto those uh, objects in the cache and when you need all the products you can say get by tag uh, similarly if you have orders uh, in the cache you can say orders uh, uh, you know added as a tag all the uh, orders objects can be mapped with the orders keyword as a tag and then you can also add a customer ID as a tag so that you know that these orders belong to a certain customer so you can say get by tag and if you specify orders it would fetch all orders and then you say get by tag and if you give order ID and if the order ID is attached to certain tags certain uh, uh, you know orders which belong to a certain customer and you specify it based on the uh, customer ID uh, that's the tag you can actually get the orders of a certain customer out of the cache using these and these are you know some very powerful features a lot of active deployments of NCache are actually using these features in their object caching then there is another important segment server -side .net code uh, we have read through, write through, write behind, and cache order. These are uh, some server side providers that run on NCache server end, um, which allow you to run um, you know, different logics on the caching infrastructure directly. Uh, I'll quickly give you an example of read through. Read through works in such a way that if it's an interface that you implement, I'll quickly show you this, and it works in such a way that if an item is not in the cache and you have read through flags turned on and you have read through provider set up, it would allow you to fetch it from the backend data source automatically right so we have a sample application shown right here here is an interface uh, this is our SQL read through provider you need to implement the I read through provider interface it has an init method it has a load from source let me just init load from source and then dispose method and then load from source has different variation, different overloads as well. So it allows you to run the uh, database logic where load customer is a method which is actually executing against the database. And it's your code that you implement, register, and based on the key, it would actually trigger a database logic automatically. Uh, if you, you know, fetch something from cache and you get a null value, what would you typically do? You would actually go into your application, call the data access layer, and get it from your relational data source. That logic can be brought into NCache with the help of a read through provider. And this is something where uh, Redis does not have any support. Write through is opposite of uh, read through, where if you have an interface which is implemented, the write through interface, uh, you register with NCache. If uh, you simply update an item in the cache and you want your data source to be updated, you can pass on the control to write through, which is again your code. And write through implementation is very similar uh, to uh, what, what we've seen. Let me just uh, let me just show you the write through provider for SQL. There you go. So it's very similar. Again, you implement the write through provider. Uh, it has an init method, initialize the database, dispose method, and then you have uh, write to uh, data source as well. Let me see where exactly it is. So write to data source. So that's the method that actually gets called. So it would update the data source um, automatically by running your code on NCache. Now, NCache specializes in this because it allows you to, and this is true for cloud offering as well, for managed and unmanaged uh, support. Uh, you will, you can actually run your server-side code on NCache servers yourself. You implement it. We can manage, configure, monitor it for you, or you can manage, you know, configure, monitor yourself as well, even in the cloud. Redis in the cloud, in Azure or AWS, the Elastic Cache or Redis, uh, the uh, the Microsoft Redis version, uh, those do not support this. You don't even have access uh, if you if you're going with the SaaS model for it. Then we have cache loader. Uh, cache loader is for pre-population of the cache. 
uh, so that you implement this interface. Let me see if I can quickly show you this as well. It's, it's similar to what we've already seen, but uh, the idea behind cache loader is that if uh, you need some data in the cache, you can pre-populate it so that your applications don't need to go to the database. You, you, you actually save your expensive database trips as much as possible by running the cache loader. And as soon as this sample opens, I'll quickly show you this. Then some other custom dependency that's to invalidate items based on your business logic. Entry processor for compute grid related features. You can process an entry in memory in a super fast manner. And then we have map reduce and aggregators. Again, these are features where NCache specializes. Redis does not have any support for these. WAN replication, uh, Redis Enterprise has WAN replication, but they're um, Redis in Azure, uh, the Microsoft version, and then Redis in um, the ElastiCache Redis does not have WAN replication supports. In comparison, we have two uh, data center active passive or active active setup. Uh, that you can utilize. So you can have one-way traffic between site one cache and site two through bridge. It's part of the same uh, product. You can use it and then you could have active active where both sites are transferring data from one another. NCache specializes in terms of uh, the Redis Enterprise, even NCache has uh, some features. Uh, the, there's a conflict resolution which is built into it uh, and then there's a conflict resolution that you can override. So we can pass control to you guys as well so you can implement an interface for con bridge conflict resolution as well. It's not always last update that wins. There could be some decisions on the conflict. Uh, if there are two updates for active active and uh, chances are that one update, although it came after the first one, but that was more important based on the uh, type of the object, based on the uh, nature of uh, information that that object has. So you might want to choose that at runtime by writing your own code. So that's how, uh, you know, that's that's a conflict resolution feature that you can use to achieve that. Uh, in general, we're towards the end of it. So in general, and cache is a lot more topologies. We have local cache, client cache, in proc and out proc. Redis also has this. Mirrored cache is something which only in cache has. Replicated, we only uh, have in end cache. Then we have partition cache, where in their partition, there is, if a shard goes down, uh, you cannot, um, you know, you lose the high availability and cache does not have that. Partition replica, async and sync, uh, both options supported, they only have async. And then we have data balancing uh, and, and some high availability features that we covered earlier on. So in general, our topologies are a lot more mature. We have more number of topologies, better in terms of, we've shown you some GUI tools. Uh, you can see the GUI tools and command line and PowerShell tools uh, differences between these two products. I think I've shown you some of these, so I'm going to skip through this. And towards the end, uh, from ASP.NET standpoint, from a support standpoint, uh, you can have ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core sessions. I distribute cache is fully supported. Redis also has this, but our sessions are advanced. You can have multi-site ASP.NET sessions. Uh, you can have view state. Signal backplane is available on both end. Uh, ASP.NET output cache, uh, fully supported provider, response cache, uh, for, for ASP.NET Core. These are all fully supported features that you can use on ASP.NET web application side. Uh, data sharing side, uh, PubSub is available on both ends, uh, but on top of it, we have item level and cache level uh, data related events. You even have a continuous query. You can run an SQL like criteria and you can get triggers uh, if uh, an item joins the criteria. For example, you have products being monitored where price is less than $100. So a new product joins, you can get notified. A product leaves the criteria, it, its price gets updated, you get notified. So you can get notified about the specific, uh, you know, records in the cache as well. So that's a feature where NCache specializes, Redis does not have these. Whereas PubSub and item level events are available on both ends. And then there are some other areas. We have official and hibernate, we have an official entry framework and entry framework core providers. Uh, for Entry Framework Core, we also have some extension methods uh, where you can automate a lot of things and you don't have to code uh, specifically for those scenarios. As a matter of fact, we've done a specific webinar on that series, uh, on that particular topic as well. So we specialize with these uh, providers for, for your ORM, uh, you know, if N Hibernate, even Hibernate for Java, Entry Framework and Entry Framework Core, uh, you can plug in and cache pretty easily. You know, it's very flexible on that. Redis and Hibernate is not officially available, so that's something which is, I think, is a third party. Then towards the end, uh, we have uh, authentication and uh, with security and, and encryption features. Uh, it supports fully, uh, you know, authorized and authenticated uh, user access through Active Directory, LDAP. 
whereas it's not secured uh, on, on Active Directory from Redis standpoint. On top of it, we have data encryption, various providers. We have TLS support, transport le uh, le level, end-to-end -end security is available, and then we also have FIPS com compliant uh, encryption providers that you can choose from. And I think right on the time, this brings us towards the end of our presentation. Uh, this completes our, uh, you know, section of NCache versus Redis. So primarily we covered, let me just give a quick summary. Uh, primarily we covered performance side of things, uh, platform, native .NET cache. We talked about high availability and clustering, how NCache is better. And then we, we actually talked about keeping cache fresh, object caching, server-side code, WAN replication, and some admin related features. So I think this gives you a pretty uh, decent idea about what NCache can offer and what, you know uh, how you can utilize in a .NET or .NET or .NET core based applications. I'll hand it over to Nick. Please let me know if there are any questions. Great, thank you very much, Ron. This was very informative. Uh, there are a couple of questions. Um, I know we're kind of running over time, but um, how does NCache ensure that the data is kept fresh? Um, anytime there is change in the database, how do we uh, ensure that NCache has the correct data? Right, so I think there was a section where we had keeping cache fresh, right? So we have, typically you can set up time-based expirations and then you can, you know, after that data is expired, you go to the data source, fetch it. But that's still going to get you stale data. Database dependencies or .NET CLR store procedures, these are two features, combination of these. Uh, you can utilize these to automatically invalidate items from cache as soon as it changes in the database. And in some cases, if you have read-through handler set up, I've shown you read-through handler, uh, you can reload it. So what would really happen is that the, you need to use SQL dependency on the objects. You map the database records, and then that right. defines a de uh, relationship between database records and NCache. And then you have read-through handler set up. So if database uh, goes through a change, that would you know normally expire items. But if you have a read-through and resync set up, uh, it would actually reload the updated copy from the database. So you get a 100% synchronization out of NCache. So there's a combination of SQL dependency, read through and auto resyncing feature that you can utilize to ensure that there's a 100% sync between data source and NCache. And I can share okay. some code examples if, if uh, people are interested in this. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much, Ram. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, uh, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to type them in today, right now. If not, you can always reach us at support at alachistuff.com. Our tech team will be more than happy to answer those for you. Uh, for any sales related questions, you can reach us at sales at alachistuff.com. And um, I would encourage you to download our product and cash. Uh, we uh, have just recently uh, launched a new version, um, 4.9 SP1. So um, you can download that from our website to play around with it. And uh, like I said, you know, reach out to us if there are any questions. Um, and with that, I would like to uh, thank everybody uh, for joining us. And uh, thanks, Ron, for your time. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys again in the, in the future.